<laughs> Good morning. Boy, is that lively music to get you going in I the morning? Know. Wow. <laughs> boy, I'll tell you, I, you know, I thought my coffee did it, but boy, <laughs> that, that was a whole lot better. And I'm sure you were. Now, what has that got to do with a visit from Santa and Mrs. Claus? I know. You're probably yeah. wondering, do I have the right <laughs> time, it, it, day? It, yeah. It, it, am yeah. I watching the right show? Yeah. But you are. You, you are. are. <laughs> and welcome. And welcome. And and a very special welcome to, and the reason for the montage in the beginning there, is because we have the lovely Andrea Ludden with us today. We do. From the Salt and Pepper Shaker Museum. So if, if you would, please say good morning to our, our group here, Andrea. Well, good morning, everyone, and good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Claus. So good to see you all in July. <laughs> it's good to see you as well. Thank you. And welcome uh, to our show. We're very excited to have you. And, uh, of course, uh, we're going to talk uh, to Andrea about actually quite a few topics uh, today. Um, certainly her, the Salt and Pepper Museum, which is located in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and it's a definitely uh, should be a must visit uh, for you. Uh, but we also wanted to talk about uh, something that happened a couple of years ago, huh, Santa? Yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you, you want yeah. to talk about somebody that was, you know, first line in all of it right, um, right and it was it was a very very terrible situation up here in Gatlinburg and and a little bit in Pigeon Forge and Weirs Valley but but certainly Gatlinburg. certainly Gatlinburg and um, poor Andrea did boy she uh, she went through through quite an ordeal and that's why we want to talk to her now you guys have seen her here before we've run her stuff and and actually during the break we're going to run our interview with her from last time because she does have such a wonderful museum yeah but so, we, much, so many we things really you know there's a lot of people going oh my god things are so terrible in 2020 and there are so many problems yes. and now yeah. I have to wear a mask or now I'm stuck indoors or now I can't yeah. I don't have all yeah. the freedoms I had before that's right that's well right. okay picture this imagine losing everything and yeah. I do mean yeah. everything and that is what happened to Andrea and I'm gonna let her tell you her. well let me just oh. let us because I, I you're just talking and I don't think we've even set the stage as to what we're talking about I apologize this I get is ahead of myself what he does. <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually referring uh, back to 2016 and in November of 2016 is when we mm -hmm. the 28th is when we had the the fires primarily in Gatlinburg, uh, but also some in Pigeon Forge and, uh, Wears, Valley. and Wears Valley as mm -hmm. well. And Andrea actually was right in literally in the middle of this. Uh, and so we'd like to talk to her about and let her tell you her story of uh, what happened on that fateful day. So Andrea, please. Please. Thank you. Enlighten us. I mean, yeah. what an ordeal. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was inconceivable. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the word that, that we all in this community decided on. It was inconceivable, uh, similar to COVID. Who would have ever thought a tiny little thing like this was going to disrupt us all? In our situation, it was a smaller community. There were 2,400 houses that burnt down that night. And a lot mm. of people, you know, have a connection to Gatlinburg and the Smoky Mountains, and so their heart went out. And, uh, and that was the, the most beautiful part of, of the whole outcome was just the, the love and the support that was showered uh, upon us. But that night um, started off actually several weeks before that when there was a fire in the National Park and there was a lot of smoke, but there was also fires in North Carolina, there was fires in yeah. Georgia, mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. and a lot of the wind That's was coming right. our mm -hmm. way with the smoke. So it was, after a while, you just get used to being, you know, two, two weeks of smoky condition, and you know, some days would be a little clearer than others, some days you could smell some, some days you couldn't. So you, you just started not taking it, taking it for granted more than anything else, not taking it too seriously, like how is it ever going to come over here? And, uh, 
And then Thanksgiving weekend came around and town was full of people. Yeah. Uh, it was, a, you know, it was smoky and everybody commenting, ooh, look at the, how smoky it is. But the morning, Monday morning, the 28th, is when I remember waking up and the colors outside were reminded me of sunsets in California or in mm. Arizona where it was that burnt orange color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yep. it wasn't yeah. and it was at like at 10 30 in the morning and it was like this sunset look and you're going wow what is that and you know I'm going outside taking pictures going look at this and look at that and, and not even thinking that there's a fire not too far away so the rest of the day goes on, it's getting smokier. So now we're just staying home. We don't wanna open the doors because we don't want any more smoke to come in. And just, just, you know, looking on Facebook and social media and Twitter and just seeing if there's anything. And there wasn't really much. The local news wasn't saying too much, just, you know, that there was smoke and nothing else, no, no warnings of any kind or whatever. And, uh, and just, you know, went about regular just so you didn't house. have like any emergency vehicles racing back and forth at this point or anything in the else? afternoon there was towards the end of the afternoon there was a lot of um, sirens that you could hear uh-huh because we lived uh, near the Alamo Steakhouse so okay. in that section yeah. of town know that area mm -hmm. near the salt and pepper shaker museum <laughs> we were actually five buildings from the oh. salt and pepper shaker museum Jeez. and so we were hearing a lot of but we again we figured it was support going to the fire to the fire to the further fire. away right. exactly further yeah. away i'm the way i visualized it is we're on the opposite side of the city yes so it's like it would have to go through the whole city i mean it was just it just inconceivable and uh so around um 6 30 is when uh it was getting really bad and that's when I started kind of paying more attention to, you know, the outside. Not opening the doors again. It was getting really smoky, um, but it, it didn't. Again, it didn't dawn on on you that there was imminent. Just more cautiousness. And that's when I heard an ambulance coming up our street. And we live in a we lived in a, a dead end street. So I was like, that's really bizarre. So I go outside because I'm curious, and uh, and I go out towards the edge of the driveway, and I see the ambulance coming up, and they're yelling, and I can't hear because there's so much noise of all the other sirens, and they have their sirens going on, and they finally get up to me, and they say, you know, do you live here? And I said, yes. Well, you need to evacuate now. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I've got my family at home. Let me go tell them. Okay. And, and so, you know, kind of like run back, and I of course run in, into the house, and I tell my dad and my brother, I was like. You know, there's an ambulance outside and they're telling us we have to leave. No, oh, what are you talking about? No, you know, that whole thing. Well, they're telling us we have to leave. So they finally come into the door and they're now telling my dad and my brother, we, you have to leave. And so my dad. And leave now. And leave now. And I so mean, my dad yeah, says, this, okay, You did let not me go. have time to pack up stuff. Exactly. You did not have time to do anything. Exactly. Uh, you, you said you couldn't even grab your dad's medication. That's right. So he asked the wow. the, the ambulance, uh, "I'm going to go to the dining room table and and grab the medication." And they said, "No, sir, uh, you can do that later." <laughs> and so you can take care of that later. And so okay, I had a, my dachshund. He was of course you know barking because there was strangers at the door. So my brother wasn't even able to grab his jacket. This is November. And so we basically just ran out and we got into our vehicles. We had three minivans. And so we each got in a vehicle and, and now it's around eight, eight o'clock, it's getting dark. And uh, it is dark actually, November. And so, um, so because they said, you can take care of that later, I assumed we were being evacuated because of the smoke, not because they knew uh -huh. there was a fire behind our, the, the houses across from us. Oh, okay. So we drive out and uh, while we're driving out, there's a dog. My brother stops, grabs the, do the dog, puts him in the van, and we head over to the community center uh, and then to Rocky Top uh, Sports Center, which became the evacuation center, the, the, the headquarters for, uh, uh, for all of the evacuation. The residents in that area. Exactly. Yeah. And by then, the cell towers were starting to fade out. Uh, 
power lines, the power was flickering, and so we decided to head out to Newport and find a hotel for the night. Because again, it's getting dark, nobody really knew mm -hmm. what was going on at the sports center, and we thought, let's just get out of everybody's way. So as we were driving from the sports center to Newport, which Newport is, I would say, probably about a 40 minute drive. Yeah. Not yeah. very yeah. far. From, from uh -huh. Gatlinburg. From Gatlinburg, yeah. Yeah. there's mm -hmm. only one stop sign. Um, on 321, it's a great way to come into Gatlinburg if you don't want to go through all the traffic. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, it took us two and a half hours to do oh, that because of the gosh. traffic. And oh. there were so many trees that had fallen across 321, they had to cut oh them. Go out gosh. there with, with exactly. chainsaws exactly. and power equipment. So we finally got that. to the hotel. Luckily, we were able to do a reservation before we, we left the sports center and uh, arrived there around midnight there was a huge line of people also wanting rooms and we were able to spend the night there and then the next morning we tried to head back and that's when we realized that the city was closed and not only was the wow. city closed but you literally had nothing to come back to we didn't know that at for the time ten days for how long for ten, ten days. days ten days for ten days we didn't know that you because couldn't city, get back for 10 we days could not. to even we could find not. out if your house was standing. We, now, when wow. you found out, Andrea, did you find out, did somebody tell you, or was it when you were allowed to drive into your neighborhood that you found it? So we, we found out uh, uh, someone took a picture of the house next to us and said that's the only house standing on our street. And that was one way that we found out that we had... Oh, we, we had nothing. And then the Thursday that they let people, started letting business owners in to secure their, their properties, we were able to go in because the Salt and Pepper Shaker Museum and my brother went. And that's when he, uh, he, you know, he had a sit down with my dad who had had a heart attack uh, less than a month before that. Oh, oh so, Lord. <laughs> oh, so it no. was just like, well, you know, let's, you know. Oh, but but we, <gasps> we found out first that the museum was okay. So we thought we had that, that sense of hope that um, if the museum survived, which was only five buildings away, it's a huge building with a huge uh, roof span, that we should be okay. Right. And right. it turned out that we weren't. And, and it, was, it was a battle. Um, everybody did what they could. Uh, the fire department, the ambulance, I was never able to find out who came to our door to thank them because if they hadn't come to our door... Um, you might have gotten caught up in it. We, were, we weren't, right in the middle we weren't of it. leaving. That's yeah. the thing because we well, didn't, didn't want didn't the know. smoke you to come know. in. So yeah. we right. weren't outside. We weren't paying attention. We never saw flames. And uh, in that regards, I'm very glad and, and, and grateful that we never drove through the flames like so many other survivors did. Yes. Um, yes but yes. It's, uh, it was then, you know, coming back to a pit. Uh, this well, is, this you, is an, you know, a house fire. I mean, you had the three minivans you escaped in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, oh my God, the Mustang. No, the DeLorean. The DeLorean. Not a Mustang. Oh gosh, Even better, sorry. Oh, 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 oh that's <laughs> terrible. That's yeah. right, you had a yeah. DeLorean. So my brother I'm had sorry. a DeLorean that was in the garage. Oh. And, and again, we thought we were being evacuated because the smoke was so bad. Yeah. It never occurred to us that we weren't going to be coming back to our house. Of course. And not. so when we did, only thing we have left are the panels of the DeLorean because the, the engine is aluminum, so it was a puddle and, yeah. and it just burnt out. And, yeah. and we that, ended that up much with heat. Yeah. It will melt anything. Now, and don't mean to cut to the chase yeah. here, but after losing literally everything, mm -hmm. how did you come back from that? It's painful. Well, <laughs> give it. It's, I, it's, I don't want to get too right, deep, and I, right, I certainly right. don't want you it's, to upset. It's a, it's, but how do you come back from that much loss? And yeah. who helped you get there? I mean, who helped you come back? And how long did it take you to rebuild? So we um, we decided not to rebuild okay. uh, in that same property, right? Because the 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 memories. Uh, were too strong. My mother had passed away in 2015, mm. so everything in that house were her memories. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all associated with that, so it just wasn't going to be the same thing. And really, the the community of of friends and artists 
and and just the community is really what what got us through and and things from you know complete strangers just coming by and and giving you a hug and and, and just giving you you know support and how can how can I help you that's how we found housing uh, until we were able to 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 get back on our feet and then I mean there's there's what what can be said about Dolly Parton? I mean, she we call her Saint Dolly because she was amazing. Out of everything, uh, she's the only one who kept her word. She said she was going to raise funds for the survivors. She did. She actually raised more money than she uh, needed, that, that she would even expected. And instead of putting that money towards uh, any other uh, organization that she had, or you know, she has the the wonderful Imagination Library, which could have, you know, can always take money because it's such an amazing organization that needs to be out there. But no, she 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 said she was going to raise this money, and whatever money she raised, she was going to give it to the survivors, and she did. And and you know, that's really amazing that somebody you know stuck to to their guns and their principles and. And that's and what she didn't stands she for. Did she do something like a, was it a monthly check? She did a monthly check of a thousand dollars, and yeah. uh, and then for for five months, and uh, and on the or six months, and uh, and on the last month she uh, it came out to be five thousand dollars instead of a thousand dollars because there was so much more money available, and she was she was there giving out the checks to a certain group. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet her, but. But it was neat to see the videos of her handing out the checks, and and it's just that little. And a lot of people think, "Wow, a thousand dollars is a lot of money." Mm, it no. is, but it's not. <laughs> it it really isn't. And not, not and when I you think, lose everything. I mean, exactly. You know, not when you I lose mean, everything. And and the problem with Sevier County is that we live in the mountains. It's not like we live in 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 flat area where you can just build whatever you want, and there's plenty of buildings. Twenty four hundred houses burned down. There, there was a shortage of uh, housing, and, right? And there was already a pre prior to that a shortage of housing, so so a thousand dollars was barely making a lot of rent of affordable. But it gave people hope, right. and and to know that somebody said Who's they were going to be there to help, help you, yeah. and came through all the way, not halfway, not three quarters of the way, not 99% of the way, but all the way, all the way it, yeah. it gave you a, a sense of, you know, there's good in the world, and, yes. and that's yes. what community is all about, and that's yeah. what's so amazing about about having neighbors, and, and I, I hope that's what people are also getting out of this experience with COVID. Is I, I was you, just going to bring that up, that yeah. I think that again ties into um, uh, kind of what we were talking about is that uh, this happened, you know, four years ago, uh, but it, it was a, it was a terrible thing for you, and and this is a tough period of time for us right now. Uh, but we can be a community of people, and whether we live next door to each other or uh, in the, even in the same community, we can be a world of community where we can help each other out and be kind. I, I think that's uh, the, the message we certainly would like to get today is kindness. And that and the fact that we can get through this. Yes. I mean, there yes. are worse yes. things to get through as yes. Andrea went yes. through. Yes. My goodness, yeah. I mean, I, I can't even imagine starting completely no. No. From scratch, and you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, that, that she didn't even incredible. have a, a, a house to, <laughs> to you know, go back to yeah. take shelter in. Shoes, yeah, you socks, lost everything. Yes. Everything. Yeah, everything. Things that you don't. I when I went to a friend's house, I had two two shopping bags. That's all I owned. Yeah, were just two shopping bags. <laughs> and that's I think that's the other thing that you know comes into play with the monies that you got too. Is it wasn't just. Uh, living to to pay for rent, but all of a sudden you had to get clothes exactly and and, and toiletries and exactly. everything. Yeah. So yeah. well well we're gonna I would like to take a break. Yeah. I don't Andrea, you're not going anywhere. We haven't no, even talked no. about all the fun stuff you brought yet. No. But I did want to have people realize yes. that people that are strong and people that are tied to communities and people that help yes. each other mm -hmm. can come back from tragedy. 
like this. And, mm -hmm. you know, Andrea is a perfect example, example yes, yes. of showing how strong you can be and what yeah. you can come back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break and show yeah. you a little lighter side of this. <laughs> and, we are. And, and we are. have, have uh, uh, Hannah play the interview that we did with, with Andrea uh, a little while back. And, and you can see a little more about her fabulous museum. And we'll be back after this with, with more discussions with Andrea and some other information for you as well. So stay with us. <laughs> Good morning, it's Kira with Morning in the Mountains and I'm here with Andrea at the Museum of Salt and Pepper Shakers in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Now this is an actual museum full of like 20,000 salt and pepper shakers, actually over that. That's and you right. can actually buy them too here. Yes, we have a gift shop and in the gift shop we have a little over 16,000 salt and pepper shakers. So it's pretty much your one-stop shop for salt and pepper shakers. If you have someone in your wish list in the you know Christmas time and you don't know what to give them, there's definitely a salt and pepper shaker that will fit the bill. Awesome. Now included in the, in the gift shop of the salt and pepper shakers, you have some of the more pop culture ones, like the ones that we're standing behind, or in front of, we're not behind <laughs> these right now. Uh, what, like you said that you um, helped create this section, right? Right, so my mother passed away in 2015. She was the one that created this whole museum. And so my brother and I are big into pop culture and sci-fi and nerdy things like this. Yeah. <laughs> and so we went ahead and created this display case. Uh, and here you will see everything that we grew up with. So you will find um, Fred Flintstone, Barbie, Gumpy, um, you will find Big Bird, uh, also the Titanic and the Beatles, which is really cool. Um, there is the Powerpuff Girls, uh, Pinky and the Brain. I mean, come on, who would have thought of making a Pinky and the Brain salt and pepper shaker? Star Trek, we have Wonder Woman. I mean, just anything and everything you can think of. And of course, the classic Disneys that are gonna mm -hmm. find over here on this side. Yeah, I see Elsa, and I love Elsa. I wonder why. <laughs> I used to dress up like her. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrea, here at the Museum of Salt and Pepper Shakers in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and you make sure to come check them out. They're one of a kind, truly. That's right, and uh, this is definitely something that's great for any age, and, uh, and we're open every single day from 10 till 2. Wow, well, thank you so much. Thank you. And back to you guys. <laughs> well, we help, hope you enjoyed that. Now, now that was obviously before yes. COVID nineteen. Yes, so. that was actually from last <laughs> year. A few little things changed, <laughs> but but a few you things, know, but, but uh, Andrea is still accepting guests to the museum, and yes. you need to wear a mask, uh -huh. and and please do that. So you know, because it's it's just yep, Andrea. Not, it doesn't make <laughs> sense not to at this no, point. I mean, no, we're sitting here without masks, but you know, we're. We're keeping, obviously, Andrea's yeah. on the other well, side yeah, of the studio yes, there. And she's actually so. <laughs> more than six feet away. So, um, so now what we'd like to do, Andrea, is we'd like to talk a little bit more about your museum. And you have a... Uh, you brought us some fun a stuff. A lot of collection oh here. So and, you, and I think I see a figure I recognize. I see, I think it's I Mrs. See a, Claus. I think oh. I see a couple oh. figures There's quite I a might few. <laughs> So please so, tell us so a little yeah, bit about. Oh, she's show? got the reindeer too. I yes, think. yes. Uh, yes. Oh, I, 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 so I've got the reindeers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, I, I, um, my family and I have the Salt and Pepper Shaker Museum in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. We have a little over twenty thousand sets of salt and pepper shakers <laughs> from all over the world, and it was my mother who collected them for over thirty-five years. And she was an archaeologist for most of her life. And what really sparked her interest was how you could see our society changing over time uh, through salt and pepper shakers. So what was popular in the 20s changes by the 40s, the 60s, all the way until now. I didn't bring that kind of an assortment this morning. What I brought is basically the fun Santa and Mrs. Claus <laughs> collection for Christmas, of course, because it's of Christmas course. in July. Yeah. So, but what's amazing <coughs> behind salt and pepper shakers one is we take them for granted, but there's not a single household in the whole world that does not have a container for salt because without no. salt we can't survive our our blood 
need salt That's true, to, yeah. to, to keep going. So our bodies need it. So we all have a container. Not everybody needs forks, but everybody <laughs> needs a salt, container yeah. for salt. So it, it connects us. And, um, and pepper is the spice of life. Exactly. So you yeah. got to <laughs> have pepper to go with the salt. So, Well, if it wasn't for pepper, Columbus wouldn't have gotten on his boat and ran into the Americas. That's right, because so, he was looking for India. Exactly. We just happened <laughs> yeah. to be here in his way <laughs> anyway. I think but, I've taken his route a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but the creativity that's also found in salt and pepper shakers is really incredible. So there's a, a series. Uh, it's called nodders and it's pretty much what it sounds like nodding so they bobble and so when you move them they just like go, go back and forth back and forth so it's a very cute set uh, but the creativity like and the humor behind them so here is a snowman and he is grilling uh, a little uh, gingerbread man. I, I wonder if he knows it's not healthy for him. <laughs> well, Christmas time, you know, diet. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Anything goes. Anything right. goes. Anything goes. And then I'm sure you can relate to this. Oh. So you're oh, yes. both reviewing yeah. the uh -huh. list. The naughty yeah. side. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'm sure that Mrs. Claus is always making sure that, you know, she knows where you are oh, in the there delivery. There you go. Yes, yes. And, uh, and then, of course, not too long ago, Mr. Santa got to uh, fly on a plane. I did. Yes. I so, did. I, you yes, know, that's here is, right. That's yep. right. So oh, here he comes a, out. Exactly. Yep. So oh. he's the salt and <laughs> the plane is the pepper. Oh, for Pete's oh. sake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just amazing the creativity and it's something that we all have at home we might just have a couple of pairs uh -huh. uh, of shakers or you might have several hundred because there's always somebody in your circle that is a collector of salt and pepper shakers yeah, well, yeah you don't have true. to drift too far from no, that. And, that is and, absolutely uh, true and, and you, you might be surprised that we have several right Santa's <laughs> <laughs> Who, us? No. I wonder why. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> One or two, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Now, well, now. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us um, how we can uh, uh, find your museum in, in Gatlinburg. Sure. So we are actually on 321. If you're coming from Pigeon Forge, you're going to go through what we call the spur, which is that canyon of green, lush forest. And then you get into Gatlinburg, which is stoplight number one. At stoplight number three, just before the aquarium, you're going to turn to the left. And we're a half a mile up the road on your right hand, right -hand yeah, side. If you see the Alamo Steakhouse, you've passed us. So you have to turn around and come back. But we're in a place called the Winery Square. It's been there for a very, very, very long time. Uh, we have uh, the first winery in Gatlinburg is located there, as well as uh, what used to be a uh, satellite location for the Grand Old Opry. Uh, it's uh, in a building called the Craft Center. So oh, a lot of okay. history in that section yeah, of town. I, and, um, I did not know, did not that, know that, that that was formerly exactly that built yeah. up. Well, no kidding. Yeah. See, yeah. the yeah, stage is still there. A part of the stage is still there, and some big <laughs> big names uh, played at the craft center. Yeah, so. they did. Wow, wow. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Boy. And we're we're out of the traffic, so we don't get any of the traffic jam. Uh, and if you just want to get out, or another way you can find us is if you're on the Roaring Fork uh, motor loop. And so you just go through that loop and it, towards the end, you'll end up right at uh, Winery Square. Okay. And, and you can see on your screen right now, there is the yeah. website for the yes. Salt and Pepper Shaker yes. Museum. So, and, and it really is fascinating. And you should go to some of the headings she's got there. Yep, she's, got she's got a got lot a of pictures. <laughs> she's got a lot of Got questions the background. and mm -hmm. yeah and she talks about her mom and how she was an archaeologist yep. and yep. and how she kind of got the whole thing started so uh -huh. it's really uh -huh. a fun site to visit not as fun as the museum itself but hey it's a good yeah. you know it's a good thing to look at yes, before yes, you and get the plan information your trip and, and, and get there so. and uh, uh, masks are required <laughs> masks are required uh, and, and we're very uh, cautious about that we okay. want everyone to feel very comfortable and very safe and we're wearing masks, everybody's wearing masks, 
and uh, we sanitize constantly all over uh, the building and it's a bit, it's pretty much a one-way uh, route that you take so there's plenty of, of spacing uh -huh. for everyone and uh, and it's just a nice place to hang out especially if it's raining outside well that's true <laughs> and and now are you open every day or? we are open every day okay from Monday through Saturday from 10 till 4 All Sundays right. from 10 till 2 okay. and we also have an online store which my brother and I have been working on and we've got another <laughs> 500 salt and pepper shakers to upload so bear with us. Is but, that all? No, that's all. But, but oh, it is up and running. Like, you, we have come on, get to work, sure. would you? Yeah. So you yeah. got to come up with yeah. 500 more? Yeah. Five, well, we have 1,600 up now. So we're putting another 500 <laughs> that we never took pictures of. Oh. And, uh, and they oh make wonderful gosh. gifts. So yeah. if you have so someone who's hard to buy for, um, yeah, so, there's definitely... Oh, I so, like the Santa tree. I, I, I was just going to say that... I stopped that, immediately that, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we probably wouldn't get much further than that. Yeah, that's a, that, we'll, we'll check out the holiday side. And but how, be fun. Yeah. <laughs> how fun. Yeah. How fun. Yeah. Well, well it's how something neat. that everybody in the family enjoys. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. Uh, uh, it, it, there's something there for everybody. It's colorful, it's historical, there's interesting inf information, so it, it's great for all members. Oh, well, well, that's uh, fabulous. Yes, so. and thank you, Andrea. And thank you for coming uh, out, and thank you for so sharing your experiences. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. it was a pleasure, and, and we will get through this. Oh, yes. And, and oh, every, yes. there's people who've been through worse. Oh, uh, much but worse. But we are a large community, the whole country is together and and yeah. nothing uh, can stop us if if we all work together to get through this and, and and rely on each other and you don't have to go very far back in history to realize we've been through situations oh as bad or are much worse than worse. this and, and, you know and, and we, we've we gotten through, through those exactly. and yeah. you know everybody yeah, just has through. to pull together and as yeah. mrs. Claus said let's be kind to kind. one another because That'll yeah. get us a lot yeah. farther than fighting with all, each other all the time. So, it, or trying to take yeah. advantage of each other. It will, so. and, and that's <laughs> the easiest thing to do because it doesn't cost you anything to be kind. Exactly. So that's right. So yeah. again, thank you so much. It was a joy. It was having yeah. you, and lovely thank to you. see you again after it all was. this time. So. <laughs> Ha haven't had a chimney to go down and visit you, so, you know. They burnt down. I know. <laughs> There's nothing down there now. Just, just a hole. Uh, <laughs> but but seriously, God bless you. And thank you. And continued success to you and your family. Yes, and, yes. And thank you for joining us on this. So, now, a couple things for us. Uh, yeah. We have, <laughs> we've been kind of busy. Uh, we you know, have. You I, know, we... Uh, you uh, got to tell them where we were yesterday. Oh, yesterday well, oh, afternoon. That, yes, 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 yes. Well, as as many of you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had. Last week. Uh, was it last week? No, no a couple of weeks, two ago, weeks ago. That's right. We had uh, a gentleman on our show by the name of Stuart Chapman, <laughs> and he does a excellent, excellent rendition of uh, uh, Elvis. And in fact. Uh, Yesterday afternoon, we were lucky enough to go, uh, in, in our case, next door uh, to, the to the main, main event, event theater, theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and to see Stuart in his portrayal of Elvis, and oh, oh my gosh, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I never got a chance to see the king while he was alive. No, and neither did I. But I got to say yesterday, uh, it was probably as close yes. as one could any mm -hmm. could get. Yes. to the king now yes. and yes. just an amazing performance and an amazing uh, thing going so Stuart and just a fabulous job our yeah. hats are off to you and may you continue as Elvis for a whole a many mm -hmm. decades yes. so and, and one of the things you. we'd also like to just say that and and he tells you about that in the show but that's his own voice oh yeah it, it, unbelievable I mean, even when I knew it was his own voice and he first started to sing, I thought, that can't is be. that really him? <laughs> but it is. And he's it got really all is. Elvis's moves. Oh, and he's, 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 he's got just, it down cold. He I does. Mean, and, you know. uh, and, of course, for fun, uh, also, you can uh, uh, watch the uh, video that's up on Mountain Fun Life of <laughs> Santa Claus and Elvis. 
uh, going down in a zorb. In a zorb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. If if you want a real belly laugh, and if you want to have a good laugh at it's Santa, funny. you know, it's by all means, yeah. check that out because I gotta say that yeah. it really was a lot of fun, and, it and was. Stuart was such a great guy. Yeah. and you know to what? play along with. Yeah, and, and I, I think <laughs> Hannah even has a couple of uh, uh, pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, because she can't she can't get enough of this, so she keeps replaying it. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, look at me. I couldn't even sit up. No. I mean, you know, I can As I kept saying to Stuart, "Where's the handle?" Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out I used him for the handle. The handle. So. <laughs> But <laughs> it was all I could do is to hang on to Stuart while he was holding the um, GoPro camera. Yes, and <laughs> yes. So again, you know, uh, watch this. It's funny. Yeah, you know, you'll enjoy it, it, this. It, again, in this so. times of, of such seriousness, we we yeah, have to gotta have, have some to have fun. To, and if it, it, have this is fun. really funny. Yeah, <laughs> so. and I gotta tell you again. Thank you to Outdoor Gravity Park. Yes. They, they made it a fun experience for both of us. They and, did. And we really they did. And we just thanked them had very a great much job. for that. Yeah. And we awarded them the Santa seal of yes. approval yes. for being a kid-friendly Friendly park. park. So, yeah. And if you watch the video, you'll, you'll learn you'll more that. about that yeah. there. You'll so, see that on there. But anyway. Yes. And then this weekend. Well, and then, yeah, this weekend we're um, actually doing a book signing. Uh, and we're going to be at the Foothills Mall in Maryville at Gentry Mercantile. And uh, they're very unusual um, for a uh, store in uh, a mall. They actually have all handcrafted items. So that's something that, that uh, uh, you like to come out and see. I'll tell and you what, let's, let's let Hannah, WBIR oh, did a wonderful job. Yes explaining this so we don't have yes, to yes it's a local station yeah here. our local station mm -hmm. in knoxville so hannah if you would uh go ahead and run that real quick and and you yeah. can learn all about it here so <laughs> christmas in july today I guess the hot summer weather weekend has us looking forward to our favorite winter holiday, a very vintage Christmas in July is at Foothills Mall in Maryville. Yeah, and of course, Santa will show up. Emily Stroud shows us how he and Mrs. Claus are keeping busy this summer. The coronavirus pandemic has added to their already festive wardrobe. <laughs> we always washed our hands a lot. But we're doing it more so even now. So everywhere we go, and we're using hand sanitizer where we can. Yes, yes. Obviously, you can see we have masks, and uh -huh. which I'm not going to wear right now because yeah. it's probably hard for you to hear me. For Joe and Mary Moore, better known as Santa and Mrs. Claus, summer is usually a time to write and sign children's books. But so many bookstores and craft shows closed down, Santa and Mrs. Claus had to pivot. Good children get rewarded and are rarely ever blue. Now they have a weekly TV show on Mountain Fun Life based in Pigeon so Forge. It started with a half hour feature for the authors called Storytime with Santa and Mrs. Claus. To reach out to parents and children to reassure them, to say that, uh, you know, it's okay. It's evolved. I mean, we've flown in a biplane, we've gone in a Zorb. <laughs> Do you know what a Zorb is? And then, just for the fun of it, I went down with Elvis Presley. I may not recoup until Christmas. Yeah. The clauses show up on YouTube, Roku, and Facebook Tuesday mornings, and the show's archive for binge watching. <laughs> this weekend, they'll take the sleigh to Foothills Mall in Maryville. We're doing a very vintage Christmas. Yeah. For, and we're going to have a Santa's workshop. We're going to be there signing books. I'm Mrs. Claus, and I are going to be in special Christmas in July. Gar with Gentry Mercantile is that it's all handmade 
uh, items in her store. So it's it's all uh, crafters that have come in. Kind of unusual for uh, a mall. This is a secret. Don't let anybody know. We're trying to find a couple more artisans to help out the elves up in the North Pole. They may just find those artisans this weekend to pitch in for Christmas. Take care. Bye -bye. God bless. <laughs> I'm Emily Stroud, live at 5 at 4. Yeah, Boy, that's something. <laughs> so, so please yeah. come by this friday and saturday now one of the things that, that we didn't mention on wbir but we just found out about yes is wivk is going to be doing a remote location there on saturday, on saturday. afternoon uh -huh. from two to four and pal gunner is going to be there yeah. so if you're yeah. a fan of the gun you know, come on down and meet Gunner in person. Yeah, and you know we'll put, we might even get a little guest spot on his station. So. We might, we oh. might, and uh, <clears throat> now we're going to be there. Just so you know, on Friday, uh, July tenth, we'll be there from eleven in the morning to three in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and then Saturday we're going to be there eleven to four. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, so make sure you uh, uh, come and, and, and join us. We'd love to see you. We're going to, it's, it's, um, we said we're going to be in our 4th of July outfits. Yes. We'll be glad Which to. Which you saw last week yeah, if you were watching Yeah, we'll be glad us, to uh, so. sign uh, uh, books. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're all going to be good. And in the meantime, boy, it finishes it up for I, us. I think it does. Yeah. As, as always, thank you so much for joining oh. us. And we always, you know, appreciate you. And please uh, uh, share uh, our show and uh, mm -hmm. on Facebook. And, uh, and of course, uh, we'll be on YouTube and we're, we're on Roku as well. So we'd love to have you uh, join us Tuesdays and share. So And make sure you come by this weekend and say yes, hello to us, us personally. So, yeah. <laughs> well, until next Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Be safe. Be safe. And again, be kind to one another. Yes. We're please. all in this together. Please. So have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. See you next week. <laughs>